There's a lot of major projects in the north, uh, mining, uh, construction, LNG pipelines. The challenges, uh, we're at full employment um, and we need to train in the north to retain in the north. We've got a great track record that if you train up there, you'll retain 90% of those people. Uh, challenges are also around um, uh, understanding and interpreting things like the Williams decision, the Silcotine decision, and uh, getting through the hurdles of uh, the environmental assessment process, getting to final investment decision. We're looking forward to uh, seeing FID, final investment, on uh, uh, three to five uh, LNG projects and uh, making sure that our contractors in the north are positioned well for procurement opportunities. LNG, um, when you think about it, think about uh, the fact that the northeast where the gas extraction is, um, for every billion into LNG, four billion will happen in the northeast. So to us, that's even bigger, but it requires the LNG uh, to release those gas reserves. Um, mining though, lots going on in terms of uh, Imperial Metals and the Red Chris mine coming up and going. Uh, things like the uh, Alta Gas uh, uh, facility uh, up Highway 37 and uh, the amount of transmission development to ensure that all of the industrial development in the north um, is well serviced and supported and uh, a connected part of the grid in our economy. On the construction side, there's been about 150 million in uh, airport investments, uh, upgrading the airports across the north, of which there are a couple of dozen, uh, although not all of them have um, uh, SCED service. Uh, we're seeing the numbers of passenger growth, especially in uh, Terrace Kitimat at the Northwest Airport and the Northeast Airport in Fort St. John, climb 30% year over year. There's great opportunities. We're seeing a lot of fly in, fly out to augment the local labor force. And uh, those airports are getting to be in top notch shape. Even uh, Fort Nelson, I've seen three to four 747s uh, or 737s sitting there on the tarmac um, that are taking workers in and out of the gas patch uh, uh, on, a, on a charter basis. It's not just the trades, all of the pre-development work is done by professional services. Engineers, accountants, lawyers, um, biologists, foresters, so it's really important that we have people that are in the trades as well as the professional services. Um, it, it doesn't matter what field you're in, if you have some sort of connection or application to resource development, construction, there is a job up north for you. Uh, the cost of living is lower, the uh, disposable income is much higher, and you can get your house paid off and get underfoot of your parents really quickly. So uh, we love it when people move up north, that's where the opportunity is and we're there to welcome them. I think the uh, relatively recent report on the ITA um, and their focus on establishing a stronger board has been really important. I think that um, uh, not only the ITA but groups like the Aboriginal Mentoring and Training Association have made a difference in um, being able to ramp up people into employment in the north. Uh, BC APTA Aboriginal Mentoring and Training now has a thousand people that they've placed into active workforce, tripled incomes for those people. Uh, those are important facets of fully employing uh, northern potential. Northern Development Initiative Trust is about building a stronger north and that's about helping uh, supply chain companies in the north with uh, being ready for procurement opportunities, having their certifications in place, uh, making sure that they're profiled, have a web presence. Uh, many, many companies that are small don't have a web presence yet, and you can't get the uh, uh, attention of the EPCMs uh, if you're not digital and not portraying yourself really well. So we work with the supply chain as well as retail and service in communities across the north, which is about 75% of the province to us.